Hello, this is Ed Oakley of Enlightened Leadership Solutions, and today's video is about the hard part and soft parts of your role. Now, any organizational process, it has two parts. In fact, any organizational change, any organizational function has two parts. First part is the hard part. The hard part is the processes, procedures, the way we do things, the rules, the guideline, the metrics, uh, the, the tools, and so forth. That's the hard part. The soft part is the people side. It's the ideas, concerns, uh, fears of people, the resistance to change. It's also their excitement. It's their buy-in to what needs to be done. It's all the people side, uh, both the, the positive and the negative, if you will. Now, which is more challenging in your experience, the hard part or the soft part? Now, my guess is that you got that answer very quickly in your own mind. And I'll bet it's consistent with what we've found over the last 21 years in audiences from 67 different countries that the answer is the soft part is the more challenging part and why might that be see the hard part is what we've learned that's what we've been educated we've learned the how-to we may have learned formally or through experience but we've learned how to do this particular business we've done learned how to do medical kinds of things we've learned how to do math we've learned how to do run a business or whatever it is that learn how to teach whatever it is we've done but the soft part, if your education was like mine, and I suspect it was, that you really didn't learn a whole lot about dealing with the people side of what you do. How to bring out the best in people, if you will. See, the hard part is about the management side of your role, because it's about control. See, you control things. You control processes, procedures, you know, the tools, those kinds of things. You make decisions about the structure of the organization. That's the management side. But the soft side, the people side, is about bringing out the best in people. That's the leadership side of your role. Now, another question for you. Which is more important, the management side or the leadership side of your role? Now, I have a feeling from past experience that the answer to that one didn't come quite as quickly. And partially because, hey, here's Ed Oakley. He's written a couple of books on leadership. He probably thinks leadership is much more important than management. Well, the truth is, it's all about balance. Too much leadership, not enough management. Guess what? You got a problem. Too much management, not enough leadership, which is more often the case. You got a problem. So balance is what it's about. Now, I'd like to share a specific example with you, but first, let me, one more slide I forgot about. Work is logical. We can really relate to that. But people are psychological, and most of us are not psychologists. So now, to that example in which I had the opportunity to display brilliant leadership and wonderful balance between management and leadership. Haha, <laughs> we'll see. Well, it has to do with small airplanes. Now, how many of you do not like to fly in small airplanes? Now, my guess is 25-30% of you probably don't. And uh, my wife is one of you. And so imagine my surprise when she comes to me one day years ago and she says, hey, we're both going to be going to Orange County, California from Denver to work with the same client for the entire week here in a few weeks. Why don't we fly ourselves? I was in shock, but I was also ecstatic. So I pulled out the charts and I started doing some planning and I realized yeah, that's a pretty long trip. You know, it's going to take about five hours of flying plus another hour for landing somewhere and, and refueling and grabbing lunch maybe. And I mentioned that to her. I wanted to make sure she was okay with that long, long of flying. And she says, well, how can we make it interesting? How could we split up the day a little bit? And what's halfway that we could really maybe enjoy some time on the ground? I looked at the chart. Denver, Orange County, halfway is the Grand Canyon. Wow, I am excited now. By the way, I didn't really show you how small an airplane we're talking about. I bet many of you were talking about twin turboprop, 19-seater, you know, regional airline kind of an airplane. Nope, this is it, single engine, etc. So anyway, we we do decide to go. So we take off from from Centennial Airport in Denver and head out toward the Grand Canyon Airport over the beautiful Rocky Mountains and looking down and seeing still some snow caps on the mountains and and uh, and it, it, we're flying now a couple hours and everything's going fine it's now time 
to slow the airplane down, start our descent into the Grand Canyon Airport. Now the way you slow this airplane down and start the descent is simply to lower the landing gear. I, so I reached over and I pulled the lever down to lower the landing gear and I waited for the rush of the wind as it's going to run by the, the wheels and gets kind of noisy there, but I didn't notice anything different. So I look out the window, which is pretty easy to do in this airplane, guess what? No landing gear. I pull the lever back up, put it down again, nothing and I quickly move into crisis management mode. Now we've all been there, this crisis management mode, maybe it wasn't about landing gears, but you've been there for other things. So I think you relate to this story. I contact air traffic control, tell them what's going on, and I start circling while we deal with the issue. Now immediately I look over on the left-hand panel to the circuit breakers, and I really don't see any issue over there, so I think, what else? Well, you know, if I pull the yoke back, suddenly raise the nose up. Maybe the centrifugal force, maybe they're just stuck in the wheel wells for some reason. Maybe there's a bird's nest that I didn't see in there or something when I did the pre-check. And so, so I pull back on the yoke, raise the nose, centrifugal force, nothing happened except I heard a yelp in the seat beside me. My wife says, what are you doing? I think I scared her. <laughs> I guess I could have told her I was going to do that. What do you think? <laughs> so, Guess what? I've already run out of ideas, and I know there are plenty in the manual, but I don't remember what they are. So I turned to my wife and I said, well, I don't know, guys, how do you think I said it? I probably said it something like, darling, sweetheart, honey, would you be so kind as to find the owner's manual in my flight bag? Yeah, right. So she finds it. I said, Okay, would you be so kind as to find the emergency procedure section? She finds that in the inoperative landing gear part. She finds it. She hands me the manual. The first thing it says is find the electric hydraulic pump circuit breaker on the panel to the left. Hey, I kind of already looked at the circuit breaker. So what's the next piece? Wait a minute. Slow down, I thought. Slow down. Maybe I should actually find the electric hydraulic pump circuit breaker. So I look over the panel, there are about 30 circuit breakers, and I'm scanning these things, and I scan them once, twice, three times, I'm not seeing it. Finally, I mean, I'm kind of excited here, I have to admit to you, this has never happened to me before. So finally I start reading the name above each circuit breaker, and I get to like the third row, halfway down the third row, and it says Elec Hydra. Ah, there it, there it is, and is it sticking out a little bit? I just kind of push on it, the landing gear goes down, the airplane starts slowing, I breathe a huge sigh of relief, and my wife bursts into hysterical tears, crying uncontrollably. Folks, my wife had been sitting there this entire time with the belief, no landing gear, means you crash and you die. She literally thought we were going to die. Now folks, there is the management side of my jo a job here as a pilot of this aircraft, and there's the leadership side. Now the management side is about controlling the airplane, the navigation and the communication and all that stuff. All It's what to do, right? How was I doing on that on a scale of 0 to 10? Yeah, maybe six, seven, eight. I guess I, I guess I solved the problem eventually. It was a little slow, but I got it done. So I guess I had a reasonable score. But how was I doing on leadership? Now, ladies, let me be clear. I do not see my role in life as leading my wife. I assure you. <laughs> but in this role, as pilot in command of this aircraft, did I have a responsibility on the people's side? You bet I did. And how did I do in it? I flunked miserably. Now folks, do you think that situation cost me? Can you imagine all the ways it cost me? I had a guy once said, how long? And I instantly said, two years. Assuming what he meant was how long before she got back in the airplane, and my answer was two years. A lot of major costs there. Now, you know, maybe you can't relate too well to landing it on an airplane, but you've had experiences in which you didn't do so well with the people side either. And wow, what would it have taken me in that situation to, to take 20 or 30 seconds just to turn to my wife? By the way, we had an hour and a half fuel on board. We, 
we could have flown for a long time. There was not a time urgency here. Important, but not urgent. I could have easily turned to my wife and said, honey, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry. There are several ways to get the landing gear down on this, uh, on this airplane, in, including manually if we have to. And even if that doesn't work, worst case, we can land this airplane right on the runway, right on its belly, and we'll walk away just fine. Wow, what did that take? Hardly no time at all. And that could have made all the difference in the world. So what's the situation you've experienced, and what were the costs to you and the organization when you didn't do so well with the leadership side, the people side? And perhaps even more importantly now, what would be the value to you to learn how to be more effectively, to, to deal more effectively with the people side, the soft side of your role?